next speaker. I met him several years ago. I, I, I believe it's about maybe about six years now. Six years ago, I started to do prison ministry with uh, Pastor Gino, and through Pastor Gino, I was able to meet Pastor Eugene Mingo, and uh, we've developed a great connection and friendship among us, and I'm just so excited about his wisdom and what he has to share, and the direction that he goes with how he does things. It's amazing being able to, to, to sit around and listen to him. He's been in the ministry for many, many, many years. He goes all over the place to speak. Um, and so I'm excited for him to be here today as a guest speaker, to be able to share the word and the word that God has put on his heart. Amen? Welcome, Pastor Nicole. Come on. 
condemnation in his heart, so is he. I'm going to title this, Who Do You Think You Are? Who do you think you are? Hey, look at your name. Tell me, who do you think you are? Say it just like that. Say it with some attitude. I don't even say it in attitude. I need some attitude. Who do you think you are? You know, it's like someone stepped on your foot and they said, hey. Say, excuse me, who do you think you are? I had someone show up in Home Depot, bump ball into me, and I had to turn around and say, oh, and it turned out to be Pastor Jack. <laughs> we had some fun that day. But I didn't turn around with attitude, am I right? I started laughing. I said, this person must know me because if not, you're about to get dropped. <laughs>
King David. Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God.
See, in the kingdom of heaven, it's a real place. That's why when Nicodemus, I'm taking a side trip, but when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, he said, listen, listen, we know that you will be the son of God, but because no one does the things that you do, and unless, come on somebody, go back to me. And, 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 and Jesus responds, said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How many have seen the kingdom of God? How many have not? See, you need to see the kingdom when all hell is trying to break loose. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus can attest to this whenever I go on to the prison. The first thing I do is I bind and I loose. First thing I do. The first thing I do is I unlock what I want to unlock and I want to lock up what I want locked up because I want God to be God and all enemies scattered. Well, that was the first five minutes. How are we doing? <laughs> That's my first of 15 pages. No more.
higher than what it was. Come on, raise your hand. Okay, I got a little bit more hands up. Okay, okay, okay. Status. How many you feel good when, you know, like cheers, you walk into a place and they know who you are? Come on, raise your hand if that's you. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, okay. Position. How many like the authority that you walk, you know, your job and your pressure? Come on, there you go, there you go. Okay, I got another. Sexual prowess. How many want to know that they're good in bed? Come on, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, now, Pastor, you got to fix the liars in the spirit. Okay? Right. The, spirit the spirit of liars in the house of right now. Okay. How about family lineage? How, how about, you know, you come from a, a good line of, of, of lineage and, and, you know, you show up, you know, let's, let's the, the mingle families here today. Oh, y'all got, oh, got the mingle family here today. How about this? How about possessions? How many got that Elmer J. Ford mentality? Y'all own a mansion and a yacht. Come on, my name is Elmer J. Ford. How many, how many like nice cars? Come on, nice cars. How many, you know, you know, Pastor Jack, I want to make the church a little bit late. I got to get the car washed. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Because it snowed last night and, it, you know, I, I just got to get it a little bit later. But I'll be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, and so when you accomplish something, how about this? How about when your children do well, you kind of 
So God had to interrupt his place to put him in place. So God interrupted him over there in Genesis, and, and, and he said unto him over there in Genesis chapter 4, he said, Now the Lord had said unto Abel, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy house and unto the land I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou, thou shalt be a blessing, and I will multiply them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, and they shall be all the families that of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed, not Abraham, but Abram departed, and as the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. What's interesting about that is that God did some things that we can't even reckon with. You know, we can't even understand what's going on there. So let me break it down for you. See, see, back in the day, you need to have enough family around you for authority, for protection, for ability to increase, for ability to manage your responsibilities. And so when you were a, a, a large family, you were able to till the land and provide uh, means of, of living for your family. And the longer, the longer your family lived and the larger they were and the more servants you had, the more land you could get, you would be able to, to be able to, just like a banana in the ponderosa. <clears throat> you hear what I'm saying? No one mess with the, you know, cart riding. The people, come on. Come on, hog and you know, they, they can fight within themselves, but let someone else that not part of that family come mess with them and the brothers show up and the father shows up. Come on, somebody. Well, guess what? Abraham, Abraham had to leave the part of the road, son. He, he, he said, get out of the country. So he had to leave his land. His possession. He had a way. And God said, leave your land, your kindred, which is your family. That was his security. He had to leave that. Because he was not who God meant for him to be. So, so by definition, your identity is not your wealth. It's not your real estate, it's not your possession, and it's not your family status. Because if Abraham would have died there, we would have been seeds of Abraham. He had to leave Abram to become Abraham. Can I go further? See, Saul, he was known as a persecuted church. But when we break it down, if Saul came in this church, he tried to kill everybody, women, children. Come on. And so he was not just a terrorist, but he was a murderer. Okay? Listen to what it says about this person over Philippians. He said, if anyone else thinks that he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day, listen to his resume. Stop of Israel. Tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in law, blameless. Another word, go down there. Christ. 
and Saul translated to Paul. And when he translated to Paul, he began to reconcile his future and forget his past. He, 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 he said, if you think that I, you can glory in the flesh, well, excuse me, I've been to seminary, I have my doctorate degree, I've traveled the land, I have all these other accompaniments to qualify who I am, if that's not enough, I come out of the right family, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees, a Hebrew of Hebrews, and I am it. Look. 
because the Bible says that Jesus was not beautiful to look at. Matter of fact, he was not attractive to look at, so you walk right by him. So it wasn't about how you look. So you cross out looks, okay? That's what we're going to tell you in chapter 53. I got to flip, I got to move, I got to move quickly. So, so, so it's not based on your looks. It's not based on your money. Because in Luke chapter 18, there's a, there's, a, there's a young rich man who comes to Jesus and says, Listen, listen, I've got everything you told me to do. Let me get to the kingdom. And he says, Sell everything you have and then come follow me. Another one, you can't buy your way. Cross out money. Cross out status. Cross out position. Sexual promise. Family lineage, possessions, accomplishments. You got anything left that you want to put down? Then what's your identity based on? If it's not based on those things, very simply, it's based on your name. And that's why God changed Abram to Abraham, father of many nations. That's why God changed Saul to Paul. That's why, come on somebody, he changed his name because he changed your destination. Your name has a destination attached to it. Your name has a definition attached to it. Stand up here, Victor. Stand up here, Victor. Come on, quick, quick. I got, I, listen, you owe me some time if you don't get up here. Victor, when I met Victor, I talked about his name. And I talked about the fact that you're called to be victorious. Where do you go? You're victorious, man, God. Where do you go? No matter what you want. I don't care what your marriage looks like. I don't care what your children look You're called to be victorious every time. Message, but I'm out of time. God bless you.